Story of the time a cop went in my car without my permission. So for a while, I was going to people's houses to do their nails. And I would do this in the summer, so a lot of my clients set up a table outside so that the smell didn't smell up their house too bad. I always feel rude to park in the person's driveway, so I usually park outside of their house on the side of the road. And this time in particular, I did just that, and we did her nails outside as well. At the time, my car had templates on it because I had just recently got it. And also, my car is a BMW two-door with all tinted windows, so you cannot see inside of it, even if you try. So I could understand why it looks a little bit suspicious. Luckily for me, my nail client's dog ended up running out of the fence into the front yard, right near my car. So I go with her to chase him, and I see the police officer opening up my car door. And I wasn't parked illegally or anything, and my templates weren't expired either. So he had no right to be opening up my car doors. So I ran over to my car and I was like, what's going on? Why are you searching my car? And he was like, this is your car. This is why waking up late might just save your life. One day when I was in elementary school, my mom and I both overslept, which meant I wouldn't be ready in time to get on the bus. School started at 8, my bus pickup time was at 7, and it was already 6.40 or something. I was still in my PJs and hadn't even had breakfast yet. My mom decided that today, we would just tell the bus driver to go on ahead and she would take me to school, which would give me plenty of time to get ready. It's 6.50, I'm in my PJs, eating breakfast, and that's when we hear the bus pull up 10 minutes earlier than scheduled. My mom peeks her head out of the door into the foggy morning and waves the bus on. She closed the door and came back inside, but the bus didn't pull away. There's a knock at the door, and my mom opens it to find a man in a bus driver uniform. He explains he's a substitute bus driver because the regular driver called in sick and that he's early because he wanted to get an early start on the route. My mom says she's taking me to school because we woke up late. He gets visibly upset and says he can wait a few minutes since he's already ahead of schedule. My mom says that we won't be ready in a few minutes and tells him to go on ahead. He seemed really angry about this, but turned around, got back on the bus, and left. But at 7 a.m., another bus pulls up to my house. My mom went out to talk to them and came back looking terrified. We put our teacher in the hospital? Story time. My sixth grade class was so freaking bad, you guys. I mean, I wasn't, but the rest of the kids were horrible. Our classroom was located on the second floor, so sometimes kids would throw things out the window and try to hit the kids on the ground. And normally it would just be things like pencils or crumbled up pieces of paper, nothing that could really hurt anybody, right? But one day while we were taking a test, my teacher had realized she forgot something in her car, so she left us in the classroom by ourselves. And some kids in my class thought it would be perfect to use this opportunity to cheat. So there was one kid in my class and we're gonna name him Chris, but he decided to be a lookout. So he stood near the window to keep an eye out for the teacher. Well, when he saw her coming, the rest of the kids weren't done cheating yet. So they told him to cause a distraction. So he runs over to his desk, grabs the biggest textbook he can find and throws it out the window at the teacher. The book hits her in the face and it busted her bottom lip open. It was so bad that the school had to send her to the hospital story time so ever since i was like eight years old i've always gotten headache and i don't know why i drink water i eat enough food and i get enough sleep but i still just be getting headaches for no reason anyways my freshman year someone convinced me that i had a brain tumor i really believed it too it was quite embarrassing so i was doing cheer at the time and i was getting nosebleeds like every single day along with a raging headache and they would always happen randomly like i wasn't doing anything to cause them it just happened so one day in the middle of my math class my nose just started bleeding before that i had a terrible headache and the girl that was sitting next to me told me my nose was bleeding as i'm cleaning my nose the girl's like i noticed that you get a lot of headaches and nosebleeds my grandpa had a brain tumor and i think that's what you have and i was just sitting there like i guess this is how god wanted me to go out the whole day i was stressing then when i get home i start writing my mom a goodbye letter and picking out the clothes i want at my funeral then i told my sister about it and she smacked me upside the head and called me stupid <laughs> Story time about how I got caught skipping school almost every day in my senior year. So our school had just started this new thing where you fill out all your contact information online. And my dad was like, okay, yeah, just fill yours out. And it pretty much was who can pick you up, who can make early dismissals for you, who they can call if you're in trouble. Well, I decided to be a sneaky little bastard and put my boyfriend in for every single one of those contacts. I would start school around 7.30 a.m. And I would go to the nurse's office at like 9 a.m. And she would call and my boyfriend would act like my dad and be like, okay, yeah, just let her drive home. Well, my guidance counselor noticed after about three months of me never being at school. So she called the number hoping to speak to my dad. But instead, she got my boyfriend. And he just thought it was a random person so he didn't act like my dad. Because neither of us knew. Like for part two. My uncle tried to kidnap me. Story time. 
Growing up, I was really close to my uncle. I mean, he was like my best friend. But then something happened between him and the rest of my family and I wasn't allowed to see him anymore. So at this point, a week had passed since I seen my uncle. I was at school about to get on the bus to go home, but I got a text message from my uncle. And it said, hey, I'm out front. Your dad asked me to pick you up. And I thought it was weird, but I didn't think too much about it. So instead of getting on the bus, I found him and got in his car. And once I got in the car, he started acting really strange. So I sent a text to my dad and let him know that uncle was taking me home. Or so I thought he was taking me home. But instead of going to my house, he started driving past my neighborhood. And right in that moment, my dad texted me back and said, Get out of that car. Do not go with your uncle. He is a bad man. So the moment we came to a red light, I jumped out of the car and started running for my life. And instead of chasing after me, he peeled off. And he was never seen again. I faked my death. <laughs> Story time. Growing up, my older brother would never listen to our mom. Like whatever she said, he would do the complete opposite. One day my mom had got us these basketballs and she told us to not play with them in the house. But of course my brother did not listen. So my mom leaves us alone for like two seconds and my brother starts throwing his basketball around. And I'm looking at him like, what are you doing? And he's like, mind your business little boy. And I was like, mom told us not to play with those in the house. And I guess I was being annoying because he threw his basketball at my head. And it hits me and I fall over and in my head I'm like, I could do one of two things. I could tell my mom and get him in trouble. Or I could fake my death. <laughs> so I pretended. <laughs> so I pretended that I was dead. And I was sitting on the floor like. And I sat there for a long time and I really tried hard not to breathe or move. So he runs over to me and he's trying to see if I'm okay and he notices that I'm not moving. And he really thought that I had died. So he starts to cry and freak out. And then it makes me laugh. And then he beat me up. And then I started crying. <laughs> My brother tried to flush me down the toilet. Story time. A lot of you guys already know this, but I have an older brother, and when we were younger, he was really mean to me. Not mean, but like, evil, okay? So when I was a baby, I required a lot of attention. Which is normal, you know, babies require a lot of attention. But my brother did not like that at all. He was used to having all the attention, but then I came around and took it from him. So he decided that he was gonna get rid of me. <laughs> so one day when my mom was giving me a bath, he had asked if he could help her. And she said yes, but I secretly think she was in on his plan. Because while they were bathing me, someone knocked on the door, so my mom left me and him in the bathroom alone to go answer the door. So I guess my brother was like, now's my chance to get rid of this little turd. So he takes me out of the bathtub. I can't talk or anything yet, so I don't know what's going on. Puts me headfirst in the toilet and starts to flush. And obviously I wasn't going down, so he took the plunger and he started to plunge me down the toilet. But before he could get me all the way down, my mom walked in and saved my life. <laughs> like, I could have drowned. <laughs> I may have gotten a child in trouble today. Story time. So today I went to the store to buy some things because I needed some things. So I went to the store, gathered all my items, and then I got in line. And I ended up being behind a mom and her son. And her son had to be like six or seven years old. <laughs> So the boy and his mom get up to the register and you know how they have candy next to the register for you to buy? The little boy asked his mom if he could have a chocolate and she was like, no, you don't need any right now. So he gets mad, folds his arm, and then he turns around and he looks at me. And this is where I may have made a mistake. I lean down and I whisper to him and I'm like, just steal the chocolate, nobody's gonna notice. Now, of course I was joking, but he actually took the chocolate and put it in his pocket. And I thought he was gonna get away with it too, but he did not. While I was at the register buying my stuff, they start walking out the door and a security guard came from the back and stopped them. And security was like, what do you got in your pocket, little buddy? You plan on buying that? And then the little boy's mom starts yelling at him and she's like, what do you have in your pockets? I didn't teach you to steal. You were not raised like that. And I ain't saying nothing. I bought my stuff and walked right past him. <laughs> This is why waking up late might just save your life. One day when I was in elementary school, my mom and I both overslept, which meant I wouldn't be ready in time to get on the bus. School started at 8, my bus pickup time was at 7, and it was already 6.40 or something. I was still in my PJs and hadn't even had breakfast yet. My mom decided that today, we would just tell the bus driver to go on ahead and she would take me to school, which would give me plenty of time to get ready. It's 6.50, I'm in my PJs, eating breakfast, and that's when we hear the bus pull up 10 minutes earlier than scheduled. My mom peeks her head out of the door, into the foggy morning, and waves the bus on. She closed the door and came back inside, but the bus didn't pull away. There's a knock at the door, and my mom opens it to find a man in a bus driver uniform. He explains he's a substitute bus driver because the regular driver called in sick, and that he's early because he wanted to get an early start on the route. My mom says she's taking me to school because we woke up late. He gets visibly upset and says he can wait a few minutes since he's already ahead of schedule. My mom says that we won't be ready in a few minutes and tells him to go on ahead. He seemed really angry about this, but turned around, got back on the bus, and left. But at 7 a.m., another bus pulls up to my house. My mom went out to talk to them and came back looking terrified. I called the cops on my mom. <laughs> Story time. 
When I was younger, about seven or eight, I had a huge obsession with soda. Do you guys call it soda or pop? I say soda because that's definitely the correct way to say it. So one day in the morning when I woke up for breakfast, there was nothing to drink except for soda. But instead of giving me soda, my mom had poured me a glass of water. Who drinks water? So then I was like, do I have to drink 